Hi folks, the brand new DR meter Mark II is loaded with tons of new features, including momentary, short-term and integrated loudness measurement, as well as true peak and loudness range covering all BS 1770 demands. It is the first meter with integrated DR measurement, showing you the same official DR results as the DR offline utility. And it has a full method for iTunes round trip tool so that you can level and monitor your amp fit master right from your favorite DAW. Individual target loudness gives you finally control about your loudness management in conjunction with dynamic deviation so that you can properly level for loudness normalized music streaming platforms like Spotify, Tidal, iTunes Music and YouTube with ease. It is specially designed in a classic level meter look as the most intuitive and easy to understand all-purpose meter for music producers, audio and mastering engineers, even if you are not yet familiar with the world of modern loudness metering. Five different sizes, classic RMS and sample peak metering plus PSR, which is sample peak to short term ratio, complement the choices you will get with the Dynamic Range Meter Mark II. Let me guide you through the user interface. With this D-Mode or Dynamic Mode button, you can toggle between Dynamic Range, Peak to Short Term Loudness and Loudness Range on the center bar graph. The center numeric field above the center bar graph shows respective current numeric values. My favorite choice is certainly DR, as this gives you the most intuitive and informative feedback on the dynamic structure of your music. But if you need to read the LRA value, you can simply toggle and instantly see the value as all values are captured and stored in the background until you reset the meter. The both slim bars on the outside are the true peak meters. Opposed to other R128 meters, you have dedicated bar graphs and numeric fields for the maximum values per channel. When you stop playback, the highest maximum peak will be highlighted. The broader bars offer three different loudness readings controlled by the L mode or loudness mode button. You can toggle from RMS to momentary loudness with 400 milliseconds window and short term loudness with its 3 second time window. Also here you usually decide to go for one option. My favorite option is short term loudness as it gives me the most intuitive feedback when I make loudness decisions within a mastering process. Momentary is more relevant for live broadcast applications. Different to all other loudness meters, we offer channel separate bar graphs. This has many advantages. You get control of the left-right loudness balance with one glance and can detect problems with ease. In order to be R128 compliant, we display the channel average loudness as numeric value here. These outside numeric fields show the max values in momentary and short-term mode, which has the benefit to detect channel-specific problems. To be EBU compliant, the center field shows current channel average loudness values during playback. And as soon as you stop playback, this field shows you the channel averaged max values to be also R128 compliant. The labels will change accordingly. But the max values are more interesting for commercial producers anyway, so that you don't need to take so much care of the max values as a music producer. Now as we are at the bottom, let's finish with the global reset button here and the known link button which links both channels of the center bar graph in DR and PSR mode together. For loudness range, this is not available. The blue infinite LED shows you whether you have a signal below the visible scale range when the LEDs are off or if you have a digital zero input when LEDs are on. This allows you, for example, to see if you have some ground noise on the input or if you have really digital zero. Let's continue with the DR integrated and LU integrated function. Simply toggle by clicking here. The values are always captured for both algorithms so that you can toggle at any time and see the values. In order to gather the official DR values, you need to meter a song from top to end. When you stop playback, the official rounded full number DR value will be prompted to the DR logo area, which is very convenient. This play and pause buttons indicate the status of your measurement. The pulsing play button indicates that the meter is ready to meter and turns constant red to indicate that the measurement is on. Here you have three complementary auto modes to have perfect and convenient control of the process. Auto on means that the metering starts and stops automatically as well as it resets automatically with the next start of the playback.
auto reset off is the same as before but without the auto reset so that you can continue a measurement. But you need to reset the meter when you want to start anew. The last mode is auto off. In this mode you need to start manually by clicking play. You can do that before you start playback so that you turn the meter into a ready mode. You stop either by stopping playback or clicking the pause button. The blue gate indicator is for commercial producer geeks. It indicates when the gate of the integrated measurement pops in. It is very sensitive so that it pops on when just one frame had been dropped for the integrated calculation by the algorithm. A constant blue LED indicates that you are constantly under gate threshold. Forget about this if you don't produce commercials. Going a bit higher you can see a green minus 18 when you are in ARM SL mode, which is just the known indicator for zero VU. When your loudness is around this area you are on the sweet spot to hit analog gear. The yellow line is far more important it indicates your set target loudness. You can grab the handle here or adjust it on the back panel. Your target loudness defines the lower border of your so-called dynamic margin. I come to that in a second. The upper border of your dynamic margin is the true peak threshold handle here. It defines when your peak bar graphs and peak numeric values turn red. You can either drag the handle or adjust it on the back panel. The dynamic margin is simply the space between the highest peaks you want to have, for example minus 0.5 dB, which is my choice to go to prevent distortion and your set target loudness, which is picked dependent on your mood, the music you master and the platform you want to fit for in terms of loudness. If it's Spotify we go for minus 14 LUFS, you will find presets for various platforms on the back panel. In this case your dynamic margin is 14 minus 0.5 dB which makes 13.5 dB or LU dynamic margin. To put it simple, dynamic margin is target loudness minus true peak threshold. When you now use a good brick wall limiter inserted before the DR meter mark 2 and loop the loudest part of your song, you first want to control the peak structure by setting the output ceiling of the limiter according to minus 0.5 dB and control how hard the peaks hit the ceiling by pulling the input level of the limiter up or down. You'll find more advice in upcoming videos and in the manual, but if your level is under control, you can have a look on the dynamic deviation field on top of the meter. Positive green values indicate more dynamic as your supposed dynamic margin, and negative red values indicate that your signal is already too hot and that you may waste some dynamic potential. I have almost forgotten the Amphit button. This is a full round trip tool to match true peak levels according to Apple's iTunes guidelines for Master for iTunes. If you click the button you just meter through the round trip. That means that the PCM source audio will be sample rate converted when you work at sample frequencies other than 44.1k and encoded and decoded by the Amphit AAC codec so that you can monitor potential level changes. If you right click the Amphit button it begins to pulse to indicate that you also listen through the round trip. The pulsing should remind you to switch it off before rendering. Be aware that the round trip causes a slight latency while without Amphit activated the dynamic range meter 2 operates with zero latency. By the way if you right click here you can change the size of the UI to your liking. By clicking the logo you enter the back panel. On the top you find plenty of useful presets for different distribution media and you can add your own personal presets easily. Scale allows you to toggle between a scale range of 48 dB and 30 dB. The 30 dB zoom scale is useful for music while the 48 dB scale is more useful for broadcast applications. Here you can toggle between LUFS and LU which is also called absolute referring to full scale and relative referring to your set target loudness. Personally I prefer LU or relative because it brings you more into the loudness normalization mindset as values deviating from set target are displayed in positive or negative values in relation to target loudness which is zero on the relative scale. This toggle affects the three numeric loudness fields on the bottom and the program loudness. The golden relative scale on the front UI is displayed all the time to give you a constant idea of loudness deviation around set target loudness. 
the horizontal mode will be added later. Even if it's just a button, it's a crazy whole lot of work to implement it, so that we have decided to implement it later in a free update. Tooltips is self-explaining and gate should be always on, except you need to apply to an outdated standard, which works without gating for program loudness measurement. True peak should also be on all the time, except you desperately need to save some CPU power or you want to toggle to old school sample peak metering for educational purpose. Complementary to changing your eye size with right click on the front panel, you can do it here too. In this block, you can set the color transition thresholds. This one is the mirrored true peak threshold from the front panel, and here you adjust the yellow green transition value. 8 makes kind of sense for me. The middle one is just for the RMS bar graph. For me it makes sense to have the yellow-green transition at minus 18 dB RMS because this equals 0 VU and is a nice reminder to adjust for a good level staging when you want to insert some analog gear. The right one has just an option for the red-yellow transition. 10 makes kind of sense as it gets hotter here. The yellow-green transition is frozen as it mirrors the target loudness, which can be adjusted here or via the front UI handle. It really makes a lot of sense to have the color transition fixed to set target loudness, as it makes it easy for the eyes to monitor loudness deviations around target loudness. Finally, we have the obligatory plus 9 and plus 18 LU relative scale. This just controls how far the golden relative scale goes up from 0 LU target loudness. Not necessary to mention that plus 18 makes no sense when your set target loudness is at minus 10 LUFS. The scale would reach far over the top of the plugin, but plus 18 makes sense for broadcast applications when target loudness is at minus 23 or 24. By the way, just for the sake of clarity for the US broadcast people, LUFS and LKFS is completely the same stuff. It's just a different terminology for the ATSC-driven US market. As an EBU guy, I simply decided to go for the LUFS rather than LKFS. The last thing is the info tab where you can move your license and would find links to useful information and last but not least the Mastering Academy where you can find the most intensive mastering learning experience on planet Earth. But now go to www.mart.digital and grab your free trial and play around with the Dynamic Range Meter Mark II. I must say that I'm really proud of this tool. Not only that it had required years of persistence and finally the foundation of Mart, but it's done with a lot of dedication to make a difference and deliver the most intuitive and easy to use tool for modern audio production demands. Enjoy your day and look out for upcoming tutorials on this topic. Bye!